Hey, this is Matt once again. We're about to have videos of the paid requests. This time for Sean. Thank you so much for that. And for those interested in requesting any type of videos, commentary, review, topic, reaction, video game playthrough, what have you, feel free to send it either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box. And this is for the film South Central, which I've never seen before. I've heard of it, but I've never seen it before, so I don't know how much of a comedy this will be because, again, it's my first time watching it, but I'll do the best I can. And thanks once again, Sean. And uh, let's get into it. So, 3, 2, 1, pressing play. Warner Brothers, okay. Warner Brothers release. Which I know Warren Bros. is not doing the best nowadays since they're having these big projects that are they're dumping Batgirl and now they're thinking of that Appy Coyote vs. Appy Looney Tunes movie. I guess Oliver Stone produced this. Okay, that's definitely a big name. Oliver Stone, I would say JFK's maybe my favorite film of his. I do like Platoon. Not your born killers. I'm it's not my favorite, but I do like JFK. Now he didn't direct this film. I saw the name Glenn Plummer. He's a star. Glenn Plummer. I remember from the film Speed. He was in the film Speed. He was the guy who Keanu Reeves takes his car and asks, "Are you insured?" Yeah, why? And then breaks the guy's car. And then he makes an appearance in Speed 2 as well. Because apparently he has just the worst luck, that character. The Maurice. So I guess this film is based on a book. Of course, I've never read the book. Summer 1982. The year before I was born. <clears throat> so this guy's getting out of some kind of jail or juvenile delinquency center. What kind of stupidity is that? Like, you just get out, and you shape beer, and you sh hit it right in the cop's face. Couldn't they arrest you right then and there for assaulting an officer? I think if you shit beer and you spray it in an officer's face, you'd be arrested right then and there. Pull a gun on you. Like, pull a gun on you, get out of the car now. So pretty much this guy he's got now, he's got a kid. Doesn't have a name for his baby. Obviously a great parent to be. So that's 1982 and this film came out in 1992. That means some inciting incident is going to happen. And then gonna be 10 years later I'm guessing this guy's gonna go to jail and then his son's gonna be a bit grown up <laughs> well he seems happy to see her
She definitely dressed like a hooker. <clears throat> Was that the pimp? This guy is definitely the businessman of the group. Your dope stays in my hood, okay. So this game that deuces don't want the dope in the neighborhood. Okay. Kind of weird though, you're fine with doing other stuff to maybe hurt people in the hood, like sp spraying beer in people's faces. What the hell was that? He's like, kill you fool. And when he came back, he did like, like his arm was popped out or something. Pop locking. <laughs> Make our neighborhood safe for our kids. You know what? How about, uh, I don't know, don't spray beer in, pe in cops' faces. Don't have Danes at all. Is the wondering what to do with the smack man. <laughs> I doubt there's there's probably not many movies Glenn Plummer got to be the star of. Yeah, she had the baby by herself, and you weren't theirs, tough guy. You talk all the toughness you want, but you were that you weren't there. You're having a little vacation with the county. So this film gets a 6.8 on IMDb. It's directed by a guy named... Which I guess this director didn't do a whole lot of stuff. Steven Milburn Anderson. He only did like... What, four films total? He did a film called Cash, which had Chris Hemsworth in it. It was before he was Thor, because this was in, well, just 2010. So yeah, Thor was like 2011.
Yeah, Stephen Milburn Anderson. I mean, this is an era where you had a lot of films similar to this about life in the hood. You had Juice, you had Boys in the Hood, you had Menace to Society, you had you know, Dead Presidents, you had Higher Learning. One that I remember enjoying called Fresh. So apparently there's a speech later on that Glenn Plummer says that cause people have told him it caused them to get back to their own children's lives. First theatrical directed by Stephen Milburn Anderson. The author of the book, Crips, appears as Dr. Teen, a child psychologist at the hospital in a scene where he interviewed Jimmy Bell's welfare at home. Okay. Well, control the night, will you, Batman? You control the night. I'm vengeance. So the author... The original South Central L.A. Trips by Donald Batir, a former high school teacher in South Central L.A. I wonder how Oliver Stone got involved. I guess the film didn't do anything at the box office. It cost $4 million and only made $1.3 million. But it got a lot of acclaim. So yeah, it got a claim. It just did nothing at the box office. Hmm. Uh, I was because of marketing or what the reasons being. So there you go. I mean, that's another film that you know people seem to think are it's a good film, but it, you know it didn't do anything box office wise. But that does happen a lot. Where you get these uh, films that. A lot of praise, a lot of credit, and then they just did absolutely nothing and it just eviscerated. So his buddy did this big speech and sorry I'm trying to find any other info on this. It's not a whole lot. Not a whole lot about this. I guess it's one of those films that kind of just disappeared and fell through the cracks. But so far I mean not bad. Charlie Terter definitely has a chip on his shoulder. Play the music. Is this some funky music? I say play that funky music, white boy, but it's a black... <laughs> Guy's a black player, so I can't say that. Sure, you want to take your baby to this type of establishment? I don't know. Being very cocky about all this. So, it's a dance club, people drinking, being rowdy, partying. I didn't. I guess for them it's like they don't really have anyone to watch the baby. They don't have any 
babysitters. But still a bit weird to take your baby to this. Now who's watching the baby now? I guess one of his buddies? Oh yeah, right there. They put a little do rag on the baby. <laughs> Was girl definitely in love with him? At least there's that. I have a feeling pretty soon we're going to have the insane incident because. See us here that he's in jail for 10 years, so that must be coming up soon. Because we're 15 minutes in, you still got the incarceration, whatever jail time we see. Maybe him changes his ways in jail, and then getting out of jail. That alone will probably take. Maybe 20 minutes, maybe more. So, which even if that started now, that's going to leave with an hour left of the movie. Yeah, probably right here. Oh, the yeah, whole atmosphere is like something's going to go down in this whole thing. But like I said, in the 90s, you, you had a lot of these type of films because there's so much going on about gang warfare and what's going on. And I think especially films like Boys in the Hood really showcased a bit of what was going on. It was so acclaimed and it did with the box office that A lot of people wanted to get on that success train. <laughs> so. Damn, got cocaine right there. With the razors and all. Interesting, they're making them do cocaine. Don't know what the reason being. They get them hooked on it, maybe? Or they set them up or something? Remember, they're hoping that for him to OD or. I they give him a taste, they give him addicted to it. I don't know, you expect him to remember all that after doing that bit of coke or smack? He probably can't remember his name right now, let alone all the shit you just said. The cigarettes. It's 
So, okay, so... The guy makes him do smack. He's out of it. I guess he didn't tell his girlfriend, or then did he tell his other friends? Then it's the next day, and then his, his girlfriend is, like, out of it, I guess? Is that potato? Well, I guess, I mean, some would use it as a silencer. I don't know if that works. Well, I guess that's what bodyguard doing his job. Push the guy out of the way. You think this guy would have had a lot more protection for how much he threatened? I I know. Just a bit fun to see guns with potatoes at the end of it, but maybe that's a real thing. Maybe that's a real thing that happens, and this is just stuff that I've seen before. Like I said, I guess it's a way to have a silencer, so that's makes it a bit different. Kind of curious now. Using. Don't worry about your graffiti. Now the cops are coming. So now, how are they get caught? I'm just checking. In other videos, does a potato work as a suppressor? The potato silencer is an urban legend of literally putting a potato on the end of a gun to act as a silencer. It doesn't work, but does make a mess. It also might blow up your gun if you have shot the bore. That's why I was wondering. Does does not obstruct it? I always think of the scene in Surviving the Game. At the end, Ice-T goes, Always check the barrel of a gun. Here, someone says, It does work when firing subsonic ammunition. It doesn't work very well, though, because the gas isn't being muffled, but exits the muzzle at a marginally slower velocity, reducing the decibel level somewhat. I don't know. It doesn't work who told you that. All you did is mashed potatoes. No, you cannot use potato as an effective gun sounds or suppressor. It doesn't really change the sound at all, except perhaps provide a different pitch. It's an urban legend that quickly developed into an old wives' tale. So yeah, a bunch of people say that does not work. So, yeah. Because I thought that looked ridiculous. And I'm like, does that work? And apparently all these people say it doesn't work, so... <laughs> Uh, 
I guess they had some false information or something. So by using the silenced potato, he killed the guy, got the marking, told the girl they had to move. She's a bit biffed. Now she's walked out, pissed a bit, and he's cleaned the baby up. So now I'm curious as to how he's going to get caught. Because I'm sure if you look at the marketing material, you don't know eventually he does go to jail for 10 years. So. Oh, is this car stolen? Oh, don't tell me this car is stolen. That he's right in the in the back. I feel this car is stolen. That or this guy's going to accidentally hit someone. Or is this lady undercover? This is undercover cop? This could be undercover police officer. Yep. Yep. So that's how undercover hooker. These other actors I don't really recognize. Yeah, I can't say I really recognize any of these other folks in the cast name wise. Glenn Plummer. He was in the film Colors, and the, which I've, of course I've reviewed that film. E for Charlie Mopic, Radio Voice. That's a pretty good one. I haven't seen it in a long time. That's kind of found footage, but it's a military you know, Vietnam movie. All the footage from a cameraman as part of a platoon. Same year as this is Trespass. He was in Menace to Society. Speed. Things to do in Devil When You're Dead. Strange Days. Showgirls. I forgot he was in Showgirls. That's right. The Substitute. That's why he was the, the good teacher, the nice teacher who got killed after finding out Ernie Hudson was a bad guy.
Guess he was in Saw 2. So cop is saying, hey, to give you a soft deal, you don't miss all this time with your kid. This is your decision to make. Of course, we know what decision you're going to make. Of course, you say he'll do it to protect his family, or he's doing it because of his loyalty. Okay, we definitely got into a time jump here. So now we're in the 10 year later gap. I thought we would want to see more transition from spending the 10 years in jail, but apparently not. We got Pepsi. Damn, that's a pathetic fridge. Or as we should, what's inside it. Damn, nothing in that fridge. Damn, stealing all our damn money. His balls, he's stealing all that damn money from them. Tell you one thing, I count my money, what the hell is in it? A lot of times, these movies, like, yeah, I'll steal some money and then no one ever notices. I mean, I, I sure as hell know what money's in my wallet. It was a slap fight. They throw, throw some damn punches in there, man. What that? What that? You know. Check what out. I don't know what's up with you. Yeah, Straight Out of Compton. Straight Out of Compton. Well, you want Malcolm X? Making these kids sit down?
Why is it like every dialogue is just like yelling it out? Whoa, man! Thanks, Ray Ray! Like every bit of dialogue, he's like, you have to yell it out. Stream it out. Is that what he was told to do? Just yell everything out? It's like, shh, low profile? You have your low profile? So Glenn Plummer's buddy is getting him to steal some shit for money. Getting part of that gain life. Well, okay, now we're Glenn Plummer in the prison. Looking like how I usually see Glenn Plummer. In the film Speed and others with the, the facial hair. Damn, he got buff for this movie. Shit, he's got a, like a six pack, almost like eight pack. Damn, he got in real good shape for this. Uh oh. A little bit over top bat theme, but okay. Like that one guy, it's like trying to be Bubba Gump or something. Or, I don't know. I am Sam. Yeah, this guy's completely out of his mind. What his brain is fried. <laughs> I guess I mean that's what's the point is to show to us how that guy's just lost his mind or something, just completely fried his brains. His brain is macaroni and cheese. Complete macaroni and cheese. I guess, you know, again, that's the point. A little bit over time, a little bit of the mudding. Kind of like a mice and men. Waiting for him to go, tell me about the rabbits. And I should compare it to Bubba Gump. That's an insult to Bubba Gump. It's more like Sean Penn to I Am Sam. I can't help it. I keep thinking of the line in Tropic Thunder. I'm not going to say it, but if you know, you know.
I mean, I just local fist because he certainly sees fucking crazy. So Glenn Plummer's just found out that his buddy's using his 10-year-old kid to steal car radios and stuff. What the hell is this kid watching and why is he watching? Why is this kid watching this? I mean, if you want to have some fun Fandango to watch, maybe not, you know, big old people. Uh oh. So you can steal their stuff. <laughs> oh, there you go. You don't get shot. Oh shit. This is one of the guy's buddies. Obviously he's not the kid. This is one of the kid's buddies. Damn. That was a massive squib too. Pretty ballsy. I mean that kid's probably 10, 11 years old well and Yeah, you need to calm down, buddy. He's alive? He's alive? I, what the hell? Okay, I'm shot. I thought he was... He got, like, half his back blown out from a shotgun, but he's alive. I'm surprised. Okay. Maybe that was him. I figured, okay, they're not going to kill him, because, but no, I guess he is alive. He just got a shotgun to the bat. Holy shit. <laughs> I don't know, I mean, this whole section... The fact that we didn't see, like, the years of being in incarc incarceration, like, the other, you know, nine, ten years before this. The... Uh, or even, like, his first reaction, finding out that his kid's been shot, I think that could have been a great scene that we didn't get. A great scene. Damn, everybody got attitude. The nurse got an attitude. The mom got an attitude. I have that damn attitude.
Well, Zali Hayes got a great mom either, it seems. It's not like she's doing anything to help. And yeah, that one actor just being over the top. So he went to bat for the guy. And now the guy's turned on him so much for loyalty. And now his tours are trying to tell the Aryan brother to do stuff to him. <laughs> That's one way to do it. One way to feed him his lunch. Put the tray right to his face and knee, knee. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be eat some of that. <laughs> Although if you do stuff like that, won't you not get out of jail? They'll keep you in more? Add to your sentence or something? Really? You gotta take off all your clothes? Even your underwear? To go into solitaire or whatever? You fear they at least keep your underwear, but... Okay. Never heard a ping pong called honky ball, but I guess it's a first for everything. This is a honky ball anyway. You shut up. You don't want stupid enough to get yourself in a wheelchair by getting a shotgun to your back, fool. Pick up your pal and pal your face. I'm not good at ping pong, but it's a fun game. I haven't played in forever. I mean forever, but it's a fun game. What the hell was that nod for? Uh, so I guess maybe the guards overheard that this guy wants to get out of the, the deuces, so. Oh, so it, so it's been like seven years. Well, well, no, it, yeah, it could be ten years because he probably got sent that picture, I guess, from jail. Thankfully, never been to jail, never been to prison, would never want to. 
I'm sure there's some people that's like if they have nowhere else to go and they're just completely. Uh... Oh, I see that guy's not going to help him, huh? Damn. I'm puking everything. Ah, there you go. Yeah, get some of his buddies. You fuck with them, you fuck with us. Damn, this guy getting intense. That type of tone's voice, I wouldn't want to mess with him. Okay, so they're making a deal. 15 cigarettes. Damn. Right then and there. And service for three months. Well, I mean, you did get, you know, beat them up for five minutes or some good times for three months. Hey, if it works, it works. You keep the peace, you get 15 box of cigarettes, there you go. So... I mean, that'll definitely give Glenn Plummer a bit of respect for these guys. These guys came through for him, and there's more. <laughs> They've known him for like five minutes. <laughs> oh, so is this the director then? So this might be the director. Yeah, I think that guy was the director. Damn, denied six parole hearings. There you go. Yeah, I never know how a parole hearing would truthfully work. I mean, I'm sure there's people who just would say the nicest things and lie and all this other stuff and yet they still get
they still get denied. I think for a lot of them, it's like, we have to do this, just it's the law, but we were never going to parole you anyway. I think maybe that's the thing for a lot of these parole hearings is that you're entitled to one, but you were never going to, you could say the best answer ever, you're not going to get confirmed. I do like this guy here. This guy's a good actor. He's intense. He's authoritative. Good emotion. Because you gotta have some kind of commanding presence to make this guy listen, and this guy has it. So his son got killed. He ended their lives, three of them. He got life for it. I mean, do you think there'd be some kind of circumstances of... Well, I guess he can't say temporary insanity. Temporary insanity because he took... It, uh, planning and stuff. I like the music too. The music is being subtle but emotional. It's not being overbearing. It's doing his job. It's doing a subtle way of showcasing the emotion of the scene. The emotional moment, so. We're brothers, we got to be there for our children. Read two hours every day, that's a pretty good deal. Yeah, helping is costly. He's right about that. <laughs> Just no free rise here. I'm guessing... Yeah, I guess the mom has only come by once, and what, whoever the hell her boyfriend is, some... White trash looking guy in the bed. See, like the kid doesn't want to leave. I don't really blame him. This is probably the most fun he's had. Because he finally has a mother figure who gives a shit. Yeah, that ain't gonna work out. He's probably gonna run away, get back to his mom, get back to Ray Ray, because that's the only life he knows. So far, I'm liking the film, though. So far, it's a pretty good drama. 
Glenn Plummer, the the Slayers of the Nurse, like, some good acting, pretty decent emotional beats. Yeah, ballsy the kid getting shotgun in the back. <laughs> What's this about? So he was taking away and I was going back to the nurse. No Shelly, okay. I'm not sure if the kid is the best actor. Uh, you know, by Nurse Shelley. I say I don't know if he's the best actor, the kid. I mean, I guess I shouldn't be that mean. It's just a kid. I just think of like Brandon Adams and the people under the stairs, which is around the same time. I think that was. That was what, 91? 92? 91, 92. So it's the same, uh, around the same time as this. And, like, that was a kid actor. I thought he did a wonderful job as Fool and the People Under the Stairs. That's right, this, I'm like, eh, he's, he's there. Oh, great, now what? These guys don't step up on him. That's all I had to take. Deuce here, and then they back off. Okay. Let me tie my hands with chains. But you shall not enslave my thinking, for it is free. Like a breeze in the spacious sky. Good quote, good line. You can lie with... Okay, so, funny, the question I was asking about paroles, he's actually answering it here. Change your attitude. Truly change your thinking. Even this guy is like confused. <laughs> so there you go, there's a bit of changing. Could have started to find stuff, find out shiny shoes. 
Maybe you spit on them too. <laughs> is that resting? They're giving him a tattoo or something? I just replaced that dot he had. Pushing dope into the brains instead of hope into their veins. Yeah, good line. Good line. Oh, there you go. These two do a really good job, Glenn Plummer, and this guy who plays Ali. Uh, kind of want to look up who this actor is. They take him in for the phone to start, but so I do like him. Ah, uh, the parole hearing. Got your second chance. This is definitely the strongest part of the movie is this relationship between these two guys. I'm like, yeah, thanks for helping me while I helped you. Thanks, buddy. Tim Truman did the score. Yeah, I don't mind the score to this. This is pretty good. And the guy who plays Ali is Carl Lumley. Oh, he's starring the TV show Mantis. Okay. He was the voice of Martian Manhunter in Justice League. He was Halloran in Doctor Sleep. Which, I mean, he was in the 1980 film The Shining, that character. Played by Stabbin Crothers. But then Doctor Sleep, uh, Carl Lumley played it. Um, but yeah, voice of Martian Manhunter... I guess he's in the new Captain America Brave New World. 
as Isaiah Bradley, the first black super soldier. He was in Buckaroo Banzai as John Parker. He was in Coming to America, Stadium Janitor. He was in Pacific Heights. He was on T-Show Cadney and Lacey, Mantis, which I didn't watch that show because I heard how they just kill his character off in such a stupid way. Like, what's the point of watching the show if by the end he just, your hero dies at the end like that? I'm just, that was really stupid. Otherwise, I would have been interested in seeing the show. Okay, that's Carl Lonely. He played the, the mentor Ali. Okay. And this director, he did a film called Dead Man Can't Dance. And he did a film called Cash with Chris Hemsworth and Sean Bean. And that was 2010. So, oh, he passed away? I didn't realize the director passed away in 2015. Uh, rest in peace to him. What did he pass away from? Die May 2015. Doesn't say how. Well, that stinks. Demon Can't Dance, he did, which I've heard of that film, that has Michael Bean in it, Adrian Paul. This gross... Yeah, that girl is just completely out of it. Just waste her life away on that PCP stuff. It's like, like he says all these things and his big ideas to get closer and goes, I need to see my son. Well, that's a good way of handling it. I understand it's not your call. It's a good way of putting it. Well, there you go. Attitude changes everything.
Well, there you go. Change your attitude, change ways things happen. I guess, you know, if you're the kid, like, what kind of reaction can you expect? I mean, I guess it would be awkward of anything. I mean, how do you start conversation after 10 years of not seeing each other? bit more breaking the ice so now the kids getting a little bit closer Ooh, that's some pretty nasty stars. <sighs> See that your son gone through that turmoil, that hurt. Well, I mean, it worked about as well as it could your first meeting. You knew the kid wasn't going to listen to him. Try to say a bit of his piece. That's weird, like she's all nonchalant and immediately she gets into this mood. Oh, he sees him tearing up, that's why. They took him because she didn't do shit. 
No, they didn't just take them. Look at the place you're living at. Look what's in the fridge. Look how much of a shithole it is. <laughs> no, they didn't just take them away. Look at all this crap. <laughs> what else are you supposed to do? Look at this place. <laughs> Seen homeless people live better than this. So his son ran away. Well, I mean, you could guess where he ran away too. We were just trying to talk tough. I mean, I guess it seems almost random as to which movies hit and which don't. Like Boys in the Hood and Men's Society. There's more kids up for the fire for these damn hoodlum stuff. <laughs> Sorry, I know it's not the most riveting commentary, but I know some people get mad like, well, why do you have enthusiasm? This is how I normally talk. That's what it is. I normally talk like this. I'm not going to be over the top like, oh my god. I... No, I mean, I don't talk to you like a normal person does. Nope. You owe me ten years and give me my son. How about that? So you, you keep it. <laughs> so I don't want it. Just give me my son. What's the big deal? Would it really be that big of a deal? Like you got. All these kids working for you. You have all these other kids that are willing to do whatever you want.
I mean, what is the limp plumber saying wrong? I got 10 years. You got shot in the back. Doesn't seem like things are working out. You're 10. You almost died. Of course, it's going to take a bit more. That's true, you took care of your buddy Loco. Damn, got knocked the hell out. Oh yeah, that okay, that's the guy who shot him, yeah. So, so now Ray Ray's trying to get the kid to shoot this guy. Sorry, I'm not saying anything. I'm just into the scene. Ooh, what is stuff? Knocked his ass down. He's going to get right in front of him, right? Yep. Going to get right in front of him to protect him. Now he's going to show how much of a man he is. He did a good job though. Knocked that one guy out. Right into the neck. Boom. Knee to the face. Now he's like, you know what? Nope. Don't lean down. He could shoot the guy when you're kneeling down. <laughs> oh, shit. Boy, went over my head.
wanted to die here today, Ray, for my boy. Because I love him that much. Glenn Plummer is selling the shit out of this, I'll say that. He's doing a very good job. Yeah, is that really too much to ask? I'm not going to take you down. I'm not going to do all the cops on you. All I want is my kid. I didn't you need the right actor to pull this off and they got it, so Glenn Plummer's definitely the MVP. Whereas Mace says him being the, the lead. Nice touching, not melodramatic, music fits it well. Can you imagine the enemy like, that walked away? He just shoots them both of them in the back. <laughs> Credits. Then it plays that song for Ricochet. Watch out for the Ricochet. <laughs> Steve Anderson. Steve Anderson. I guess that's the name he was using. Huh. I guess that was the name he was using. I mean, I looked it up. It didn't say Steve Anderson, but... But yeah, that was... Fairly well done movie, I gotta say. Uh, I did quite like that. I did quite enjoy that. That was... Nicely done, in terms of... Uh, good emotional moments... Wonderful performance by Glenn Plummer, the star of it. <clears throat> he definitely knocked out of the park. Overall, I like that one. That's a good one. The kid, the, the boy, he was okay. I kind of wish they had an actor again, like Brandon Adams, one of the people under the stairs. A little bit stronger of an actor. Uh, what was it? The uh, the mom? I don't know what happens with the mom. I mean, that kind of side story doesn't really finish. Where is he still going to be with that lady since she's into the drugs of the PCP? Is he going to leave her? Is he going to stick with her? What was up with that guy? Was that her boyfriend or not? Just a one night stand? So I think that plot didn't really finish itself. And it's like, well, again, what's going to happen with her? Because the way Glenn Plummer put it is me and you are going to start an, an, a life together. Didn't mention the mom. So I don't know what the, the whole deal with that is. But yeah, with that said... Glenn Plummer, <coughs> he knocked out of the park. I liked it. 
with that said, thanks for watching. We'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.